Hi, student athletes. My name is Anne-Marie Hayes, and I'm a research associate for the Joplin campus of KCU. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about study details, what we're going to be looking for, why we're looking for it, and um, how we want you involved with the study design. First, we're going to jump into a little bit of background information. The title of this research study is Improving Health Outcomes in Student Athletes at MSSU, a partner institution in Joplin, Missouri. So while me, Dr. Stunninger, and student Dr. Sarita Hira, who is also a lead student doctor on the project, um, while we come from KCU, we're working closely with the social work department of MSSU, and their senior capstone students will also be helping a lot with the project. First of all, our objectives and measures for this study. We're determining to the extent to which clinical yoga has a physical and psychological health benefit for college students. The reason we would like to target college students as our participants is because college students in general already have a lot of stress on top of them. It's a new environment, you're learning to be independent, um, and there's a ton of studies if you want to look into them about stress and mental health issues associated with college students. We would like to focus on student athletes because on top of all this normal college stress, you have the stress of demanding schedules, um, team bonding, um, relationships with your coach in the sport, the schedule, as well as the demands that come with playing a college level sport. Therefore, our objective is to see how a clinical yoga intervention will impact the health of student athletes. The proposed measures that we'll be doing will be uh, cortisol levels in saliva. That's the stress biomarker we're going to be measuring. Cortisol is essentially your stress hormone, and we can measure that through saliva samples. Um, the second thing we'll be looking at is vital signs. This will include things like your temperature, blood pressure, height, weight, heart rate, and KCU student doctors will be helping with the study to collect those. The third thing we're going to be measuring is self-report questionnaires. So these questionnaires include a sociodemographic questionnaire, uh, social validity uh, surveys, perceived stress levels, anxiety and depression scales, um, and these self-report surveys will be given by social work students. This experiment will consist of eight weeks, and we'll talk a little bit more about the study design and the schedule later. When it comes to measuring the cortisol in your saliva, we're going to be using salivates to collect that. Uh, these salivates will be used at weeks one, four, five, and eight. There will be detailed instructions on how to use a salivate in a separate video. Um, but another thing that I would like to mention here is that you'll be asked the day before you collect your own survey. Uh, we won't do this for you. You will collect it yourself prior to coming in and giving it to us. Uh, the day before collecting, though, please try not to exercise. I know this might be really difficult because you all are student athletes, but if you know you're getting a rest day, um, try and plan so that you can collect your saliva then the next day. Um, try not to drink caffeine. I know that's also really difficult as a student, as a caffeine coffee lover myself. Um, if you could try and plan your schedule around that, that would be great. And then also the morning of collecting your own saliva uh, and during the first three collections, please don't eat anything or drink anything and don't brush your teeth. When you receive your salivates to collect the saliva in from us, these instructions will also be in there, but I would like to uh, walk through it now with you as well. There, For one saliva collection, there's going to be four tubes of saliva that you will collect from yourself. The first one you will collect immediately when you wake up. The next tube you will collect 30 minutes later after you've woken up. The third tube you will collect 30 minutes after that, which is in total an hour after waking. And then the last tube, the fourth tube that you will collect that day will be right before you go to bed. Um, so again, one saliva collection is technically four tubes of saliva. And as soon as you take your saliva sample, please store that in your own freezer at home. Uh, you'll also be given a biohazard bag and you can store, once you've collected the saliva, you can put the tube in that, you can put all four tubes in it, and then immediately put that in the freezer. Uh, you will then bring in your saliva on it, at a designated time on a designated day to us. But until you bring it in, please keep it in your freezer for storage. These are the salivettes that you will use. Um, essentially, it's just a tube with a cotton pad inside. Uh, you'll see in pictures two and three, you just take out the cotton pad, Pop that in your mouth uh, and you'll kind of chew and suck on that for about five minutes, I believe. Um, you'll then put it back in the tube, close the tube, and then you will store that in the freezer. 
Uh, the same thing will happen with all four collection tubes that you'll do for that day. Um, and again, there's another salivate training video on YouTube that we will link to, and you'll be able to watch that and it'll walk through the steps in a, in a more detailed way. For a little bit of background, if you're interested, cortisol is a stress hormone that we're going to be measuring for the study to dictate physical levels of stress. Once we collect your saliva samples, we will analyze them and record levels of cortisol using an ELISA. Um, once we put your saliva through the ELISA, we will generate data that looks similar to this graph. So uh, as you can see here, this first, first data point is supposed to be the first sample of saliva you take right when you wake up. And then 30 minutes later, 30 minutes later, and then one final one right before bed. This curve represents normal cortisol levels throughout the day. And so what we will be measuring is the area under the curve, which is essentially daily cortisol exposure. Um, so we want to know when we take your saliva before the study, what your curve looks like. And then we will take your saliva again at weeks four, five, and eight. And once we get that data, we'll compare it throughout the duration of the study and see how your daily cortisol exposure changes over time. And if you participate in clinical yoga, if that helps moderate your cortisol levels to be this more normal curve shape. Current literature and findings. Um, so right now, cortisol is influenced on things like your age, sex, race, and ethnicity. Um, and these baseline cortisol concentrations are very important. This is why we're only targeting female student athletes in their off season. Uh, we know that in the on season, you maybe can't be not exercising for saliva collections and your schedules are rigorous and demanding. So we ask that you be in your off season as I'm sure you noticed in the criteria. And we also ask for female student athletes only um, and this is because there's a different baseline cortisol levels between male and females. So we can't compare male baseline cortisol levels to female baseline cortisol levels. So just some interesting things about cortisol. Um, and then this is what I was mentioning earlier. Higher, there's a higher intensity, higher intensity exercise results in higher cortisol levels um, acutely. We also found though that higher baseline cortisol levels occur in athletes usually. So um, even though they may differ between male and female and age and race, um, we also noticed that between athletes and non-athletes in the literature, there are different higher baseline cortisol levels. The current literature, though, is mixed data from student athletes is limited. Um, there's a lot of cortisol data out there, but not specifically on student athletes. So we hope that this study will add to the literature and add to the scientific information that's currently out there. And then the effects of stress and or mental health on cortisol. So current literature about correlations between aspects of health being measured to um, cortisol have mixed findings as well. And then I also want to point out this graph. So this gray line is a normal diurnal cycle of cortisol. Um, and this yellow line is a abnormal uh, cortisol cycle throughout the day. So as you can see, this line's a little more flat. There's not as steep of a decline in the middle of the day leading to the last uh, saliva measure point. And this is actually an example of PTSD. Um, and we're hoping that, uh, you know, maybe if you have abnormal cortisol levels and abnormal diurnal cycle, um, that throughout the weeks of clinical yoga, we can help kind of regulate that and get it to look a little bit more like the gray curve. Again, thank you so much for participating. We're so excited to have you be a part of it, and we're looking forward to seeing what the data says.